so cyber attacks. The word alone sounds like something out of Tron, but in reality, it's less neon lights and more, congratulations, you just lost your credit card to a guy named Kevin in his mom's basement. Today, we're breaking down every major type of cyber attack you should know about because odds are you've already been a victim and didn't even notice. Number one, phishing, the digital catfishing. Phishing is basically the Nigerian print scam 2.0, except now the prince works at PayPal, Amazon, or your bank. Here's how it works. Hackers send you an email or text that looks real. The logo is there, the colors are right, the message feels urgent. Your account will be closed in 24 hours unless you verify your details. And like a champ, you panic, click the link, and type in your login info. Congrats, you just handed the keys to your kingdom to a stranger. In 2016, hackers fished John Podesta, chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign, with a fake Gmail reset email. He clicked. They got in. The leaked emails became one of the biggest political scandals of the election. Moral of the story? Even powerful people fall for phishing. So if you've ever clicked a fake UPS delivery link, you're in good company. The scariest part? Phishing has evolved. Now we've got spear phishing. Targeted attacks where they know your name, job, and maybe even your pet's name. Whaling. Phishing specifically aimed at chief executive officers and executives. Smishing. Phishing via text messages. Basically, if you've ever wondered why tech companies keep spamming you with, we'll never ask for your password, it's because a shocking number of people still fall for this every single day. Number two, malware, viruses, worms, and digital parasites. Malware is the umbrella term for bad stuff you accidentally downloaded while looking for free Minecraft mods. It comes in flavors, viruses. They attach themselves to programs and spread when you run them. Worms, they don't even need your help. They spread across networks on their own. Trojans, pretend to be something useful but stab you in the back, like that shady free PDF converter you installed. Spyware silently watches you, recording everything from keystrokes to browsing habits. Adware doesn't steal your data but drowns you in pop-ups until you cry. The Love You virus in 2000 spread through email with an attachment called Love Letter for You. When people opened it, because who wouldn't open that? It infected their systems and spread to their contacts. Damages? Estimated at $10 billion. So, yeah, love hurts. Malware is everywhere. And sometimes you don't even need to click anything. Just visiting the wrong website can be enough to get infected. So, yes, that sketchy free streaming site with 47 pop-ups is not just being aggressive. It's practically begging you to get hacked. Number three, ransomware, pay up or else. Imagine someone breaks into your house, oh, locks no. your fridge, and then says, give me $1,000 in Bitcoin if you ever want to eat again. That's ransomware. It encrypts all your files and demands payment to unlock them. Hospitals, schools, and even governments have been paralyzed by ransomware. In 2021 alone, global damages were in the billions. In 2017, the WannaCry attack infected over 200,000 computers in 150 countries, hitting hospitals, governments, and businesses. British hospitals had to turn away patients because their systems were frozen. The attack was traced back to a group linked to North Korea, proving that sometimes international politics is basically just one country trolling another with a giant digital lock. And the worst part? Even if you pay, there's no guarantee you'll actually get your files back. It's like giving lunch money to a bully and hoping they won't also take your shoes. The best defense? Regular backups, because ransomware can't ransom what you've already duplicated. Number four, DDoS, death by traffic jam. Distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS are like someone hiring 10,000 people to stand in line at Starbucks just so you can't get your latte. Hackers use botnets, networks of infected computers, sometimes even smart fridges and baby monitors, to flood a website or server with traffic until it collapses. In 2016, the DIN cyber attack used the Mirai botnet, made of infected cameras, DVRS, and even baby monitors, to flood servers. The result? Major sites like Twitter, 
Netflix, Reddit, and Spotify all went offline for hours. So if you were wondering why you couldn't binge watch Netflix that day, blame someone's smart fridge. Companies like Netflix, Amazon, and even government sites have been knocked offline this way. It's not about stealing data. It's about pure chaos, a digital tantrum. Five, man in the middle, digital eavesdropping. A man in the middle, MITM attack, is basically when someone inserts themselves between you and whoever you're talking to. Say you're on public Wi-Fi at Starbucks, you think you're securely logging into your bank. But in reality, some hacker sitting three tables away is intercepting everything. Username, password, even that embarrassing note you wrote yourself in your banking app. These attacks can happen through fake Wi-Fi hotspots, compromised routers, or poorly encrypted connections. In 2015, hackers exploited insecure Wi-Fi at airports and hotels to spy on users. Some even injected fake websites that tricked people into logging into lookalike portals. Translation, if you're doing online banking on free airport Wi-Fi, congratulations, you've just handed your life savings to a guy eating a Cinnabon three seats away. So yeah, maybe don't do your taxes on the airport Wi-Fi. Number six, SQL injection, the database break-in. If phishing is tricking the human, SQL injection is tricking the machine. Websites often use SQL databases to store information. If a site isn't coded securely, a hacker can enter malicious commands into a search bar or login field. Instead of username 123, they type a line of code that says, hey, just show me all the data. And boom, credit cards, emails, passwords, all exposed. This is one of the oldest and most common hacks. If a website isn't sanitized properly, it's basically like leaving the vault door wide open. Number seven, zero day exploits, the hidden trap. A zero day exploit is when hackers find a flaw in software before the company even knows it exists. Imagine discovering the front door to your house has a secret lockpick feature and burglars already know how to use it. That's a zero day. The Stuxnet worm, discovered in 2010, was a zero-day exploit designed to target Iran's nuclear facilities. It secretly sabotaged centrifuges while making everything look normal on the control panels. Many believe it was built by the U.S. and Israel, basically the world's first real cyber weapon. These are the most dangerous because there's no patch, no fix, no defense, until it's too late. They're so valuable that governments and hacker groups will pay millions just to get access to one. Number eight, credential stuffing because you reuse passwords. Let's be real, most people reuse the same password everywhere. Probably something like summer 2024 or QERTY123. Hackers know this. So when one site gets hacked and emails plus passwords get leaked, they just try that combo everywhere else. Amazon, Gmail, Netflix, PayPal. This is why experts scream about using password managers. Because the second you use the same password twice, credential stuffing becomes your worst nightmare. Number nine, social engineering, hacking humans, not machines. Sometimes the easiest hack isn't a fancy virus or a line of code. It's just lying. Social engineering is when hackers trick people into giving up access. It could be as simple as pretending to be IT support and saying, hi, I need your password to fix your account. Or calling the front desk of a company, pretending to be the CEO and demanding access. Kevin Mitnick, one of the most famous hackers of all time, admitted that most of his hacks weren't technical at all. They were just social engineering. People are the weakest link in cybersecurity and hackers know it. Number 10, supply chain attacks, the Trojan horse upgrade. Here's a sneaky one. Instead of hacking you directly, hackers go after the software you trust. They compromise updates or third-party vendors, so when you download what looks like a normal update, you're actually installing malware. The SolarWinds hack in 2020 was a perfect example. Hackers compromised a trusted IT management tool and through it gained access to thousands of businesses and government networks. It's like finding out the friendly pizza delivery guy has been swapping your pepperoni for surveillance bugs. Number 11. Insider Threats, The Enemy Within Sometimes the hacker isn't a stranger on the internet. It's Bob from accounting. 
insider threats happen when an employee steals data, sabotages systems, or accidentally opens the wrong file. They already have access, so their attacks can be devastating. In 2013, Edward Snowden, an NSA contractor, leaked classified information on U.S. surveillance programs. While not done for personal gain, it showed how dangerous insiders can be when they have access. Companies spend billions protecting against hackers, but the real threat might just be your coworker with a grudge. This is why big companies monitor employee behavior and limit who gets access to sensitive information. So that's the world of cyber attacks. Phishing, malware, ransomware, DDoS, man in the middle, SQL injections, zero days, credential stuffing, social engineering, supply chain attacks, and insider threats. Some of them are high tech. Some are as simple as a phone call, but all of them rely on one thing, people not paying attention. The internet is like a giant digital city. Most of the time it's fine, but every now and then you're going to get pickpocketed. The best defense? Strong passwords, regular updates, backups, and maybe just not clicking on the free iPhone link. Because if there's one golden rule of cybersecurity, it's this. If it looks too good to be true, it probably came from Kevin in his mom's basement.